Good morning, Wolfpack Savage here. My voice is going out, so please bear with me. But in today's video, we're going to be spectating some trio gameplay and going over the weird shit that we've all done, we all do, or hopefully eventually we'll stop doing. And what I mean by that is this game is about learning. It's about growing. It's about evolving. It's about figuring out the things you want to do as a player that benefits you and stepping away from the terrible mistakes we all have made at some point in our gaming lives. This goes from anything between walking around with a heartbeat sensor, crouch walking in the open, thinking that crouching actually helps your accuracy when in reality it doesn't. Standing stagged, standing still while in fights. We're gonna be going over different fundamentals of these guys' gameplay, putting you guys in a real different, putting you guys in a different scenario. And now look, the difference between what I do, the difference between these videos as opposed to covering my own gameplay is we've covered my gameplay many times on this channel before when the series first started. And it was definitely helpful, but I found a lot of players that are out here looking to get better. It's hard for them to benefit off of my gameplay videos because I'm doing things that they probably aren't at that level yet. So what I love to do is sit here, spectate average players, below average players, and work on their basic fundamentals because a lot of players share the same mistakes. They share the same flaws. So if we can go over what these guys are doing wrong, a lot of you guys can actually relate. But look, here we are spectating your boy. He's in a solo situation now. We have two teams fighting to the to northwest. Now, the reason why I know they're fighting is because their blips are popping up, right? Their blips wouldn't be popping up without a UAV unless they were firing their weapon. So automatically assume you possibly could potentially have about six enemies over there because this is, again, trios. We do have a scavenger we could start on. If we go ahead and get that one, Blue could land on another one if it goes way away. Big mistake by Killshot trying to go ahead and get super aggro right now. Because if he dies, we're right back to square one. And there it is. So Anon trying to let him know, bro, make sure you get this damn thing. He marks it even after Killshot had marked it. Oh, no, don't do the same shit. Too late. Enemies are already pushing us. Now, look, another thing, another mistake by our teammate on your left as well. Another mistake by our teammate is he allowed this team to know where we're at. Once a team kills a player in a certain in a certain building, what's gonna happen? Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is bad on every level. Once a team kills a player, let's say this building they're going to assume his teammates are also in that building, which is why they ended up pushing and ultimately got the kill. That squad wipe had nothing to do with the hot drop. It had nothing to do with the fact that, look, look at the screen. What the hell? It had nothing to do with the fact that they got back from the ghoulie and they had a bad time. You know, it was a rough start. They had a scavenger objective they could have worked on. Again, if he would have picked up that box, Blue could have landed on another one and they could have got all their money and regain somewhere else but moving on we have the usmc let's go baby we have flu and j rat as well there you go pick up that money brother now let's look at the map we have a lot of things going on over here we hear gunshots we don't see them but again if you hear gunshots that's, all, that's a way to go ahead and push a team UAV's not detecting anybody. We do have a recon objective. I wouldn't be against getting. Um, not really something I'm a fan of in Caldera. But it's not a terrible tactic. It's just not the way I like to play on this map. On Verdant, I love recons. But Caldera right here, you guys know, people are going to be bushwookies. The moment you, you go to leave that recon, you're going to get clapped by somebody laying prone to the heartbeat sensor. And that's just a fact of nature. Yes, I'm seeing peen something, but for some reason it's not popping up, which is kind of strange. Now, notice the split right here. Green looks like he's going to go do the recon, which, again, I'm not a huge fan of, but I'm not against, and we're going to go push this team. That's camped up. Flu goes down. If I was the enemy, I'd go ahead and push in here. 
Your boy came in with a DP. It's not a good close range weapon. It is a beamer of a gun. But this is probably your best mid range AR right now, I'd say. Long range is pretty is pretty atrocious. Close range very hard to utilize because the AD speed because of the ADS speed. But again, if I was him, I just would have pushed him. But it doesn't matter. He ended up jumping out, and his teammate was able to clap us from behind. Now go back to what I'll say about the split. Your boys doing the recon. They're gonna be pushing the fight. I don't like splitting up with my team if I know I'm pushing known campers. If you know there's a team sitting in a building, you want to hold hands and four stack those guys. I'm not a fan of four stacking. I'm not. But if there's a team holding hands, you you, you give them the lethal force that they give to you, right? <laughs> They're camping. Four stacks. You go in there. Four stacks. You reciprocate that shit. I don't like the fact they went in there into the unknown. Not to mention there was two different teams on top of that. Also, that knock on the tower, that blew me away. I'm assuming he's already damaged from the other squad. But we literally shot him in the freaking big toe and just blew out his ankles. Now we do hear footsteps in here. We got a heartbeat as well. Trying to ping his teammates, letting them know. I'm sure they don't have vocal comms because no one is responding to the ping, which is also weird. Guys, look, again, if your teammate pings danger... He's by himself. Go to him. Go to him. I take that back. It's a loadout drop. Get your loadout, then go to him. <laughs> it's four in the morning, guys. Y'all gotta bear with me. I'm sorry. All right, good. Orange is coming back right now. I don't know where the blip went. He could be on the other side. Look, your teammate's pushing as well. Try to collapse your teammate because if flu comes to save you and you're just sitting in the same room, the heartbeat sensor not getting any pings, then he ends up dying. You're dead. Spectate flu. I feel like I've spectated flu before, and I feel like he's a good player. His name's very flu with a smiley face. I'm pretty sure we spectated him. I I have this strange feeling like he's looking at the ground on purpose. I'm gonna be honest. I, f I feel like he might know I'm spectating him and he's literally ruining his reticle placement just to piss me off. If he whips out a heartbeat sensor, intentionally picks one up off the ground, he's on to us, boys. He's on to us. All right, another ping going out. And again, Flu trying to trying to help him out. Let's go see. No, 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 no. I'm going to get a UAV. So look, right now we're going to go get a UAV. Round to the face needs to hold his position. Try his best to play as passive as possible until we get that bitch in the air and get closer to our squad member. Okay, blue, you're just dude. Okay, blue. Blue needs to either A buy shit himself. Or B drop the money early so when we go to the buy. We can just go ahead and get it. That whole back and forth nonsense is wasting a little bit of time. And again, if if round to the face would have been in some immediate danger. That poor SOB would have been fried. But again, slide canceling is good. Map awareness is good. UAV knowledge is good. Paying attention to the minimap is good. Flu's definitely on top of it. Cyber shot the right hand side. Trying his best to weave away from that. A little premeditated uh, stun. I like the fact he's trying to distract them. The sniper's still on the left-hand side. This is a dangerous spot to be in right now. Great reaction. Noticing the little shadow inside of the... Noticing the little shadow inside of the... Uh, the window. Another guy laying on top of us getting shot from a whole other squad right now. We are being third party. There are a total of four enemies in trios. So there are two squads. One on the hill as well. We also do have that guy in yellow right now. We see the glint on the left-hand side, too. He sees it as well, trying his best to just dip right out of there, played up, and then regain. Now, judging by Flu's gameplay, he's probably going to go ahead and ego challenge that guy that he he got the crack on. One enemy actually pushing up right now. Playing the vehicle is cover. Not really a good play. Enemy inside the building. I'm liking Flu's gameplay, I'll, I'll be honest. You know, I, I said to myself, I was like, man, you know what? We're gonna record a video real early just to see what the lobbies are like. But Flu, Flu oh no. Flu's must've been playing for like nine hours now because he's on fire. Oh, daddy. 
Yo, don't repeat that, heady boy. We got people out in the middle of the open as well. He sees them. Can he get some beams off fast? He needs to get plates from some of these guys, maybe outside the window. And I do believe there's still a team on the hill as well, because again, that's only three kills. And none of them, I believe, were the ghillie suit guy that was in yellow. And he's remembering this shit. That's why he's still looking at it. He's not... His awareness, his IQ is definitely up on the charts. Looking for the other player. Honestly, just looking for some plays. We do have a buy near us too, but again, that hill is kind of scary. Challenging these hills, dude, with one plate. Mm. Not against it. You got to go for the teammate buy for sure, but man, it's just a bad spot to be in. All right, he goes ahead and buys plates instead. I'm going to be honest. It works. And honestly, to be to be real, dude, flu being the carry, plates definitely over your teammate. Your teammate's not going to be able to clutch up that game. Maybe. I'm not giving round to the face enough credit. Also, guys, if you haven't tried Sneak Energy, do it. Just do it. They got a... They got something coming very soon just keep your eyes peeled it's a secret um but yeah guys use code savage at checkout and again everybody that's been using code savage y'all have been an absolute blessing thank you guys for all the creator code support much love dudes for real y'all been absolutely just destroying it i love to see i love to see dude when people are like try to drink this one or, or sneak energy and everyone's like sneak i love i love seeing that shit bro All right, but anyway, going back to the actual game instead of me just talking about sneak, we got a high ground right here. They may have some enemies. It's still pretty early game, so probably not. This is more towards a mid-game situation. Mines are definitely going to fight people, but again, there's many people camping buildings. I like to play these areas on the outside, and if I do go in buildings, I try to go in with my squad members. There are too many people holding hands in corners. If you jump in to a room, what happens? Nine times out of ten two three four enemies sitting in all four corners waiting to shoot you so again if you go in with a full squad you're going to be a lot better off that way good pinging system game i, I love how in the update they're like we, oh we fixed the pinging uh, i don't think so i don't know if they test their games or not but i can tell you right now i'll test it for you that shit sucks Great shot. See if he ate such a good ass weapon, man. It's good to see some of these. This is a Black Ops one, right? It's good to see some of these Cold War weapons are still viable. And I'm gonna be real, guys. I've been struggling hard in Vanguard Royale. I've, dude, we won five Caldera games yesterday. Our first seven games, we won five of them in Caldera. Switched to Vanguard Royale. Didn't win a single fucking one for four hours. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because Vanguard gun, because I love using the Swiss and the Car 98. I don't know what it is, but I am fucking garbage at Vanguard at Vanguard Royale. I'm, I'm, I'm so fucking washed up. Someone do a tips and tricks video for me and send that shit. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. I'm also, you guys have been asking for some rebirth videos. Um, I will be posting one every weekend, just kind of testing the waters. Um, let me know if you guys like it. I play Rebirth more as a warm-up than anything. I'll play for like an hour or two before I actually get into the games for Caldera, but so I'm not like a Rebirth fucking know-it-all, but we'll definitely do some spectating videos just mostly because you guys have been asking. So again, um, check them out. I'll start on Saturdays and we might throw it in more and more if they do well and they uh, have good feedback. So as far as hidden shots right there, look, rocking a hard spot. These are positions you guys need to rotate early. These are spots you have to rotate early. So let's go right here. See this right here? This this is this is what they like to call get fucked. Right, you ever seen 300? I think I referenced 300 like twice this week, but you don't ever wanna go through this little area right here because this is a kill box. When you have high grounds like this and 
wide ass entrance points people are going to be watching this from the outskirts and people will be watching from the high ground you're basically going to die so if you ever have an area you have to cross through something like this rotate early do not play the edge in small areas like this Playing the edge is huge and can be very beneficial with racking up some kills and putting yourself in training positions and fighting positions and having fun, for sure. But if you're trying to play position and strategy, playing the edge of the circle, I, I know everyone disagrees with me. There are a lot of YouTubers out there that say the complete opposite. I'm telling you guys right now from a strategical standpoint, playing the edge is idiotic if you're solely, solely going for strategy because you will get clapped. But again, when you when you decide whether you want to rotate early or or rotate with the zone, you need to start looking at the topography of the map, start looking at the terrain, start judging it. Your boy's awareness is definitely on on Q right now. The enemies are a little bit spread out, but of course you can assume they're going to be near each other. You got two guys, one on each tree, one on the right, one on the left. You got a guy to your lower right. That's going to be your most immediate danger. You might not have seen him. One of our teammates got DC. Hello, Blue's clueless right now. We have no pings going out, so Blue is just like, I don't know what the hell's happening right now. So, to be real, as good as Flu is, and I know Flu is basically in solo mode right now, because he doesn't rely on his teammates. And, and, and rightfully so, but he should definitely ping it. He should definitely ping where these guys are at. Even bot teammates, guys. If you can ping an enemy, even a bot teammate could fucking clean him up for you. Bots have their moments too, boys. Trying to get some good shots off again. We have a team to our east right now. Oh, nice glint. Good reaction. We are ego challenging, but I love the B hopping and trying to contest them. If you can feel confident enough to get some shots off and hit the glint and cause a little bit of flinch, you, you're sitting in a lot better spot than if you're just ego challenging. Sitting perfectly still. I love the way he was just playing that. Good third party. We got another team right here below us. They're in the middle of fire now. Go ahead and push up. He's probably going to go for the... Never mind. Got flying in. GG. I was going to say, he's probably going to go ahead and start going for the plates and reloading. So I would have pushed up with that, but... The guy flying in was definitely an audible. You see his head right there. You saw it on the left-hand side by the rock. He's a little bit further back. Maybe running down. Yep. That's a guy coming back for his shit, though. No, it's not. Okay, I thought that was a teammate coming back for his shit because of how he just freaking beelined it to the loot, but he had all of his stuff on him, so not sure why. I'm not sure why he would just run full sprint at that rock. A um, couple reasons. One, you might be thinking to yourself, well, we might need plates or ammo, and you're right, he might, but we shot at him. Clear as day. He should have known that we were sitting there on the other side of the rock and or pushing. So him going there would result in his death um, if he wasn't ready to ego challenge. He wasn't ADS. He, it almost looked like he had no idea we were there. Meanwhile. Now, look, this is where confidence breeds results. Okay, bro. This is where confidence breeds results. Also, let's look at the map. You need to get a buyback. You need to get the carry back in right now. Do not waste time. You gotta go for the you gotta go for the big dick move. Never mind. Circle's coming in, you're fucked. You saw how he is playing. Yeah, he's even saying, go buy me back, but the circle's coming in. He, there's no way he's gonna make it. No, he might be able to clutch this shit up. Crouch walking J-Rat. Another enemy push, and you hear him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Go back to the DP, brother. You're doing good with the DP, my dude. Look how slow we're playing. This, again, going back to what I was about to say. Confidence breeds results. If J, if J Rat would get confident, he's, he's got a good gun. He's got a good build. It's not like he's a complete bot. He just needs to move around. He needs to start getting a little bit more aggressive. When your boy Flu was in the middle of fighting, he should have been up there with him. Helping the fight. Oh, uh, you see himself in. Oh, God. We got stunned. Oh, God. Oh, God. Is he going to get it? 
He should have pushed up the flu to help him because then he could have his teammate back as well. Um, we are so vulnerable from the left hand side. You are not safe, my guy. Um, secondly, that position there. Notice how long that fight took just on the waterfall. Notice how long that took. What happened because of the length of time that fight went on? Another team came by. Another team, third partied. If he would have got that first knock and instantly seeing and hearing the enemy on this other rock, gotten the second knock and then challenged the guy at the distance and gotten the third knock, that would have been a squad wipe and we could have been gone before the other team could have even been there. But now they've kind of forced us into this weird position to where we got to kind of play the edge of the circle, wait for them to come off and hopefully shoot them in the back. Because if we go out first, we're going to get shot in the back. So it's a weird thing. If they play the edge, we might take some gas damage. Um, but to be honest, because of the position we were forced into, because of our passive gameplay, we really have no other choice. Now, don't drop the ball on this. You got another enemy. You got another enemy above you too, brother. You got another enemy above you. You just left to go. What are you doing? Don't drop the ball on that, guys. Don't drop the ball on that. You, you you have to listen to the footsteps and you have to judge. I know you've seen an enemy out in the open and you want to get a kill. I know you do, but you have to think long term. You have to play it like a chess move, right? If you get that kill, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to die because you still have a homie on top. What I would have done was waited for all three to jump down. We saw one in the middle, then one by the railing, and then again, we heard one on the top. If the top boy would have jumped down at that point, I would have shot him in the back. The other guy that was in the open that would probably be close to the railing, and I wouldn't even worry about the railing guy. I would get those knocks, get out of the little cubby I was in, move to a safer spot, maybe one of these little walls, and then challenge the third player. But you never want to settle for one kill and sacrifice your life when you could possibly get two or even a whole squad wipe, especially this late in the game. It's a 2v2v2 situation or 2v3v1. Um, Rainbow and... Ergabla. <laughs> All right, TTV and Facebook, your boy fucking multitasking. That's the way to do it, bro. Let's go see how many Urgla Bloods got. Oh, 10 kills, okay. Rocking a coop. Now you gotta be careful in this position too. We're on the ridge and we got all these buildings and all these rooftops and all these windows exposed. You see them in the window right there, the blue, the blue, big, big window, blue building. You see them, you did. But yeah, let's put our let's put our body more vulnerable. This is dangerous, bruh. Now look, let's talk about the guy in blue building. He's just sitting there hiding. He needs to be peeking these windows and looking around. He needs to start opening his eyes because the longer he sits in the corner, the more opportunity we have to push to him. But right now, what could he do? He could clap us 17 ways a Sunday. But because he's playing so passive and hiding in a corner, he's gonna miss out on opportunity. Also, to be 100% real, I'd probably go ahead and just, um, eh, you could bail off onto the rooftops. Wouldn't be a bad move, but I actually, I like, the second thing, I like the, uh, view we have. We can look in the windows and watch the open areas across the street. We are a little vulnerable sitting up here, though. This is kind of crazy. Granted, when we get knocked, our teammate can get us, but... If we get knocked, the enemies have a chance to reposition, chance to push us, so on and so forth. I like this spot better, though. Yeah, I like that. I'm trying to get an angle on the enemy. What? There he is, there he is, there he is. You got it, you got it. Shh. Fuck. Ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at a 2v3 situation. We know where one enemy's at, for sure. Let's see where the circle rotates, too. If it rotates to us, we're sitting pretty. Your boy Ugarbala needs to get back on the ridge. He, it does not rotate to us. I would go ahead and jump on this rooftop. Go ahead and get on that rooftop. You'll be in the zone a lot longer. You'll have an angle on both sides of these buildings so we can catch them in the open. I also would not use a sniper in this situation unless you're comfortable enough to get three headshots back to back. Stick with the Cooper. You got 60 rounds. You have a teammate helping you as well. Um, it's a medium range fight no matter how you look at it because of the size of the zone, you're sitting pretty. Now, I do think we're hiding a little too much. I want to see the enemies rotating out of the buildings to your right-hand side, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Now he's under us. So, what I was meaning to say was we were watching this. I'd want to watch this. 
I wanted to watch the enemies leave this, cross the street, and then kill them. Doesn't matter, though. We're now in a 2v1 position. We could still potentially throw. Just play it slow. Listen to the calls. There it is. GG. Good play. TTV Vase Blows. Urgablura. Let's get it! And again, guys, the beauty behind spectating randoms is we get different players every day, and it's always good to see a change of pace from different players' um, gameplays. You know, we're all guilty of it. I am as well. When you watch one or two players over and over and over again, you just try to mimic what they're doing. But let's just be realistic. Most of the people we watch are way better than we are, and mimicking what they're doing is damn near impossible. If I try to go out there and be like, Joe, whoa, I'm gonna look like an 80 year old man tripping over my own fucking shoelaces. Yeah, it ain't gonna be pretty. So I love this because it gives us a different perspective on different players' gameplays. I love this because we see different mistakes as well as similar mistakes. And you guys can sit here and tell yourself, wow, I'm not the only one that does this shit. Everyone does this shit or vice versa, you know? So there is a blessing to spectating randoms. There's also a curse. Um, but guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel today. But until next time, you have a good one and good luck in Warzone.